When I was a young man traveling in Africa, I tried to hitchhike through the Sahara Desert to reach Timbuktu. I never made it. Um, I don't think he likes me as a driver. Keep going. Come on. Come on. Let's go. That's good. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Come on. I was on a quest to find the great black beat poet Ted Jones, who spent half the year in Timbuktu. Ted died, but dreams, like poems, never die. Thirty years later, I'm on a boat up the Niger River to the fabled city, but it's also a journey into the languages and culture of West Africa. This time, I'm traveling with my friend, the griot Karamo Suso, who helped record the voyage in song and poetry. Language is the essence of humanity. But half the languages on Earth will disappear this century. This is our last chance to connect with the sounds and tastes and wisdom of these people in their own languages. I'm Bob Holman, adventurer for the word, and we're going on the road. Back on the boat with Karamo, I think of how this whole thing started through his father, Alhaji Papa Suso. Papa is a renowned griot in the Gambia and a dear friend, and he's been trying to get me to visit him for years. By this point, I'm hoping you're asking yourself, well, what is a griot? Well, listen, griots are the keepers of the West African oral tradition. They're poets, musicians, historians, genealogists, combined Joseph Campbell, Bob Dylan, Studs Terkel, and the County Hall of Birth Records, and you've got a griot. Griots are so respected, they even appear on national television. I don't think so. I don't think, I think I want to, I think I want to get... I met up with Papa in Dakar, and first things first, decided to get a haircut. Can you take like this? Just think that much? Yeah. Papa's drummed some tunes. I read some poems by Leopold Senghor, the George Washington of Senegal. With Senghor, he thought of the woman as being Africa, as being the motherland, the motherland. Very nice. Okay. Very nice. Okay. Thank you. I was excited to show off my nouveau hairstyle on my first occasion entering Papa's compound in Banjul to meet his wives and relatives. Papa's brother was on hand as the griot in residence. You've got to have a griot to make any event official. Women singers, Umu Sangre, Kanja Kuyate, are an important part of griot tradition. Women also form their own street theater groups to satirize local politics. We instantly hit it off when I showed them my Barack Obama t-shirt. Karamo and I made a hajj to a calabash field. These huge gourds make the body of the kora the essence of the song. Do you hear that? Mm, I hear something. What is it that I hear? The kora always...
always sounds like it's accompanying itself. It's the bass. Boom. Boom. And it's the melody. And sometimes it's even. We visited Papa's hometown village, Soda Maseri. The chorus is playing, the children are playing. The chorus is the essential instrument of Mandinke griots. It takes five days for Papa's nephew to make a chora. Each handle is designed differently, carved by hand and foot. Here's the calabash that Caramo and I found. Sliced in half with a machete, the skin is a cowhide buried for two days in lime, scraped, kept wet and pliant. The calabash is centered on the skin and the craftsman cuts it to size freehand. There's an old saying, wet cowhide attracts sand, but no one says it because it brings bad luck. Then it's stretched tight over the calabash, rosewood neck and the handles are pushed through, and simple fishing line is used for the 21 strings. At last, what I was waiting for, Papa sharing an ancient griot secret. Dad, do you want to tell him something about it? Yeah. Well, this is the room where Kora was given to Korea Musa, my great-great-grandfather. Okay. By a devil. What? De devil man. So if you take the Kora, you alone in the room, playing the Kora, soft, you will see a gene. Hmm. That because, remember because me they, something. They, they, they love the Kora, in, uh, Kora, Kora very much. I was afraid that the djinn would show up, but what happened was that Papa used this sacred space to do what griots have done for over 900 years. He passed his Kora over to his son, Karamo. In days of yore, griots were singers for kings and queens, and now they get by as taxi drivers. The city is back that way. way. Okay, we'll keep going now, then we'll turn around after. All right, okay. So let's start with the song. Uh, okay, so if you guys come under that yoga. Aye, aye, ah, que le yife, ya, mi tale, ya, faga, que le mandi jitola, que le puri baga jute, que le toque man fola. Papa, I get if I get even by. Oh, oh! Take it in by me, my friend. Although Amadou was a better griot than driver, he did deliver us safely and soundly to our next destination, the home of Mr. Dembo Bojang, the representative to Parliament of Papa's hometown village, and who owed his political success to an ancient griot tale. So there's, a, there's a, some remarkable stories about the powers of the crocodiles, and some of them even, some of the people even talk about you as being connected with some of those powers. Of course. How does that, can you talk a little about that? Of, of course, of course, um, because, um, you know, the crocodiles that we have here does not eat human flesh. What Mr. Dembo reveals is that every re-election, he visits the Kathakali sacred crocodile pond to try to see the albino crocodiles. Anybody, you know, it's they're spiritual, you know, and they have blessings too. People ask the crocodiles' blessings to get well, to get rich, to get pregnant, to get re-elected. The prayers are often answered, but if you see the albino crocodile who only appears on Mondays and Fridays between the hours of 4 and 6 a.m., your wish is guaranteed. And this is where Dembo Bojang's power comes into play, because he's never missed a visitation and is the longest serving member of the Gambian parliament. With the white crocodile as his talisman, and contemporary griot praise poems as his election theme song. Jene, the World Heritage Site of the Great Mosque, made completely of mud, which needs to be rebuilt every year. The connection of griots with Islam is deep. 
it's believed that Mohammed, on his first trip through Africa, ordained the first griot, Sorikata bin Jafra, whose vocal expertise drew crowds to hear the teachings of the prophet. It's Monday, market day in Jene, the internationally renowned gathering of tribes, Fulani, Songhai, Bozo, and others, and goods from all over. That's the real gold of Jene. Pele Pele, the peppers. Mm. Up on the roof, we run into a father and son hunter griot team. Their art includes dancing while playing the symbion, or hunter's kora, which has six strings and percussive shakers. Their job? To wander through the towns singing songs of welcome to all in this crossroads of Central Africa. Our hunter griot friends say goodbye to us on the banks of the Niger, which turns into the bustling port of Mopti just a few k's away. This is where we'll launch the next leg of our journey. Now we're going to try to find Ted Jones up in Timbuktu, great American poet who was a spiritual father to me. Am I allowed to say spiritual father on television? I don't know. Is this the TV or is this the movies? Like, remind me again. Anyway, what we've got here is a pinas, one of the most beautiful boats ever created. And uh, we're going to take a trip for a few days down the river. Keeps going on and on and Jinne Mopti Laktabu Nia Funke Hey Timbuktu Big River gets bigger Did we forget to hire a captain here? <laughs> Are we going to have to row this ourselves? Oh, brother. Peut-être dans mon lit. Merci. Comment se bête? So salam. So salam. After we make our arrangements with the captain, we're on our way to Timbuktu and beyond. We lay in the essential stores. Don't forget the cola nuts, gasoline, cooking oil, bailing pails, camera gear and hard drives ballpoint pens and paper for poems, toilet paper, and one of my personal favorites, Usman Simbeni's novel, God's Pieces of Wood, the story of the dakar Bamako railway strike that was the beginning of the end for French colonialism. The Niger River, Jaliba, Great River in Manding. Yoruba has it as Oya, the river goddess herself, and nomadic Tuareg, Nger, the Niger, but for all West Africans, it's the source of life for food, travel, cleansing, commerce. There's a sense of drama to the Niger as it plummets straight into the Sahara. Villages dot the river, Fulani herdsmen, Bozo fishermen, Sangay farmers. We stop at one, Sayanosa, a village infused with the mystique of the golden earrings. This is a griot song of beauty, being the replication of the sound of waves of the river with the waves of sand. Made in gold, a mirror to the bride. We end up at a compound where our guide promises the earrings reside. So as you can see, we just struck a bargain here with the second wife at Sayanosa. Sayanosa is a beautiful village. We'd pass by a great mosque. It's, it's the same kind of architecture as in Jenny, but it's a little smaller. As a matter of fact, the village, which seems like such a tiny little oasis from the road, is actually half the size of Jenny. There's 6,000 people who live here. And uh, we've discovered amidst the entire population of this compound, lots of great energy going on here, that the earrings 
repose in this room. So, and, oh, it's, yes. we can hear the suitcase yeah. being opened right now. <laughs> I'm not giving any hints to <laughs> what else or how to find this place. You have to talk to Albert if you're going to find this place. But uh, as soon as uh, what's his second wife goes, what's her name? The name, the name of the second wife? Ebony Landero. I think it's better when you okay. tell me you spend okay. him about All right. his we'll do that. name or what Oh, I'm really look, looking look, forward look. to seeing... Look the president. Oh, my goodness. Wow. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, is it true that there's something that goes... There's that something goes across the head? Or these just no. stay on their own? They stay on their own. But what is, what is your name? Oyelo Inema. Kadija Tambura. Kadija Tambura. Kadija Tambura. Tambura. Seya no sa. Seya no sa Mali. Kadi oh um, Mali. Seya no sa. Seya no sa Mali. Kadija this Tambura. This is a, you are so beautiful. Kadija to a Sibel, we we Tamara. <laughs> Here's a rough translation of the Grio poem of the gold earrings. Add a sweet note to the saddest music. Build the road by walking. River waves, sand waves, gold earrings, pray for the river rising. The end, completeness, so complete, once upon a place. Can you hear it? The origins of language. It's very difficult in our literate culture to grasp the role the importance of the griot in West Africa. It's a different consciousness. Griots represent something inexplicable, yet essential. The keepers of history, epic genealogy. The griot sings culture into existence. It's a very important place, very beautiful place, because it's one of the, our historical places. So when you come here, you have to take one of the stones here, or go, go look for a stone and place it on top of here. Uh, so it, it is kind of like... Perfect. It's a burial ground for queens, but also a sacred place. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, so. Those were the days before there were days. So there was only night. And the rocks were people. That's right. And the rocks thought. And the rocks thought, and the thinking rocks were thinking, if only they could walk. That's what they were thinking. The whole time they were thinking, they were wanting to walk so bad. They wanted to walk so bad that they started to talk. And that was the beginning of language. It was what the rocks thought. It was what the rocks thought up. It was what the rocks thought up when they couldn't walk. We made another landing at a Tuareg village. Hello, anybody home? Knock, knock. Kong, kong. These desert people are always on the move. Yeah. Wow. It's a deserted village. It's like my memory. Yeah, it's deserted me. Okay. If you should see a man walking down a crowded street, talking aloud to himself, don't run in the opposite direction, but run toward him. For he is a poet, and you have nothing to fear from the poet but the truth. That was Ted Jones' signature poem, a first-rate jazz poet who hung with John Coltrane and coined the phrase, Bird lives when Charlie Parker died. He was my mentor right up till he died in 2003. The outsider's outsider who went to the end of the world to find his African roots and seek solitude for his poetry. Back in the day, he invited me to his home in Timbuktu, but I was too busy being in my 20s to get a visa, so when I arrived in the middle of the Sahara, I spent the night in jail and was sent back. Life in the Panas settles into its own rhythms. Catch of the day, ah, uh, the Capitan. Commonly found here in Lake Dabo. What can I say? Well, it's delicious. 
Yum, yum, yummity, yum. And every day, we'd pack up our movable hotel. And often, we'd roll right up to our river neighbors. The Niger is a river through time. Here are the roots of hip-hop, gospel, and jazz. It's in the griot tradition that the blues began and then returned to the electric guitars of musicians like Ali Farka Touré and his son Vieux, who lived just right upriver. The natural sounds, music, and poetry you hear in Africa gave birth to the great musical forms of the U.S. Being here, you realize that the oral tradition resists being written down because it can't be. It's a living thing, mouth to ear, person to person, generation to generation. Next stop, Neofunke, hometown village of the king of the African blues, the late Ali Farka Touré. We stop at the only stop sign in town where we try to evoke Ali Farka Touré's spirit and hopefully conjure up his son, Vieux, for a jam session with Karamo. Do you think the kids know if he's here? Hey, how are you? How are you? How are you? How are you? How are they say that uh, they know him, they know Alifarka, they know Vieux, yeah. but they think maybe Vieux is out. Out of the town. Could be in yeah. Uh, yeah. Bamako. Exactly. Okay, let's. Uh, you ready to head off to the garage? Here we go. We ask for directions at his personal garage, which leads us to his home and his brother-in-law. <laughs> Too bad, Vio wasn't there, but we were invited in for tea. Again, Barack Obama brings us together, and Amadou promises to call Vieux to tell him to expect us in Bamako on our way back. Ah, yes, what else? The obligatory sunset shot. After three days on the river, we've reached the end of our journey. You are going to Timbuktu. You are come to the middle of nowhere. Arriving in Timbuktu, it's nothing like I thought it would be. Instead of a shimmering Sahara city of mystery, I find a dusty desert town. I start my search for people who knew Ted Jones and find his former guide, Saba Sadibe. This man? Yeah. It is a friend from Ted Jones. And his former landlord, Abdullah Tiambe. Ah, Can I see your, I have, you have your identity? Yeah, I am the planter of the trees in the desert. Oh, let me, yeah. that's what Ted, that's what Ted, Ted wrote Jones about you. Said, there it is, planter of dabs. Oh, oh don't sweet. Don't forget uh, Ted Jones, because the first man of America of my family is Ted Jones. Oh. Because he is a writer, yeah. and he's a clever man, and he likes very well Africa, yeah. uh, beyond the, uh, Timbuktu. He had the real spirit. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saba guides me to Ted's last residence in Timbuktu. Don't 
So this is his street here. The street of the living. What's the name of the street? Umulolo. Umulolo. Okay. Right then, number 22, here we go. Wow. Wow. They have a key. The key is lost. Oh, the key is lost. lost. They open for you to see where... Uh, one more mystery for Timbuktu. Mm. You know, the block on the door of Ted Jones. Yes. yes but the poems still managed to move, oh, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. How old do you think oh, this, this house is? This is a house of about... It is a... No, uh, years circle. Wow, this century. This is a house for the uh, 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 17th century. Wow. Well, he found the key. Unbelievable. The mystery is solved. Could I just take a quick look? Yes. C'est possible? Oh, yes. possible? Wow. Oh, this is really something here. I'm going to take my shoes off. Here living Ted John. See? Wow. A poem. What is it that reflects the keen anatomy of chance? Only bones, falling asleep. It's as if you're here with me in Timbuktu, Ted. All eyes closed, now and then and now. Ah, bonjour, monsieur. Merci, merci. Arrivé à Timbuktu, et maintenant, mon passeport. <laughs> I have officially arrived in Timbuktu. Well, my passport has been officially stamped, as I should have done 30 years ago. I've communed with the ghost and the guide of Ted Jones. My work here is done. I made it to Timbuktu. Hallelujah. And now to fulfill my promise to Caramo, the Bamako Jam Session of Vieux Touré, the endless journey of the oral tradition.